Hi, everyone. Welcome to our podcast today. So today we have a very special person here with us, Stephanie Stevens. So Steph is a vegan content creator. She's a nutritionist and an activist. And she uses her voice to educate on the importance and benefits of, of veganism and assist others on their vegan journey, whatever that may look like to them. So welcome, Steph. It's so great to have you here. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, to start with, can you just share with us how long have you been vegan and what made you go vegan? Yeah. Um, so I've been vegan uh, since I was a teenager. It's been about uh, almost 14 years. Um, I was vegetarian first for about a year and a half. And at the time, like I didn't really know what vegan was. I just thought like, you know, as long as I'm vegetarian, I was like vegetarian for the animals. And as long as I'm not like eating animals, like ethically, that was all right with me, you know? Um, and then I sort of accidentally read a book on veganism. I didn't realize the book was about veganism when I picked it up. Um, it was just like a, like a nutrition type book. Um, but it actually ended up being about animal cruelty. There was like an animal cruelty section. And that really kind of um, impacted me a lot. And I learned about like the egg industry and the dairy industry. And mm -hmm. that's pretty much the difference. I mean, that's the major difference between vegetarian and vegan. And I was like, you know, I can't, you can't like unlearn certain things. So I was like, I don't feel right eating eggs or dairy anymore. <laughs> so at that point, <laughs> you're pretty much vegan. Um, but yeah, it was just, um, and it was, it, it was a process. Um, I guess I went from vegetarian to vegan overnight, sort of, um, you know, the honey thing. I was, I was a teenager, so I really didn't know what vegan was. And I just, I made a lot of mistakes, especially in the beginning, but I just kind of learned as I went along. Yeah, it's one of those things where you, once you've learned something about this sort of thing, it's like you can still keep doing what you're doing, but every single time that you do it, in the back of your mind, you're kind of like, oh my God, but that thing. Right, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, you just, you can't look what at it about same. that? Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, it can keep nagging you in the back of your mind, especially if it's something that's really deeply connected to your own value system. Right. So, so yeah, I totally get it. So do you ever miss meat or have cravings for animal products? Um, I would say yes and no. Um, I'm, I'm still human. You know, I grew up in, you know, the Midwest, like eating meat every day before I went vegetarian. Um, if, you know, like my neighbors are like grilling or, I'm, you know, at a restaurant, and there's like non-vegan stuff or whatever, you know, you just like have these smells or whatever. A lot of the time that's where it's like, wow, that smells really good. And like, I don't feel like, I mean, I feel like you can acknowledge that and be like, yeah, that does smell good. It's not like I hate, I didn't go vegan or vegetarian or whatever because I hated the taste of meat or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like having, when I have those um, products, those animal-based products, like in front of me, or like at the grocery store, at this point, like I don't even see it as like edible or like an option. Like I don't even think about it. Um, but I think that comes with time too, you know, because especially in the beginning, a lot of vegans like sometimes they'll, you know, slip up or they just forget or like forget to check ingredients or something. Um, but yeah, over time it becomes second nature. Mm. Yeah, I think if you've done something for a while, um, then it just becomes a habit. And you'll just understand how those things work. Right. Like I was um, gluten intolerant and dairy intolerant for a long time. Mm -hmm. And after a few years, it just became, you know, like I didn't look at the foods that have gluten and dairy. And I, you know, it didn't even occur to me like, oh, yeah, I might I, that I want to actually eat them. It just was not food to me anymore because, I, you know, I hadn't eaten it in a long time so right right yeah I yeah know. yeah so do you find that veganism is uh difficult and like what are some ways to make it easy accessible and like more convenient 
Yeah. Um, I think that veganism is not difficult. Like that's, that's the hill that I'm willing to die on. Um, but that being said, yeah, especially in the beginning, like it's unfamiliar, it's new, it's, it feels uncomfortable a lot of the time, especially if you don't have someone that's already vegan that you're close to, that's guiding you, helping you, um, you know, if you don't have those resources or you don't know where to look even, um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of learning. And especially in the beginning, you're learning new things like every day, sometimes multiple times a day, since you're eating multiple times a day. Um, and then, you know, with like cleaning products, skincare, hair care, you know, um, fashion, those kinds of things, you know, you get into all that too. And it's, it's a lot of learning. Um, and yeah, in, in the, in the beginning, it can feel difficult or mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd say like frustrating, but just like, it's, it can be, a, it can be work. You know, you need to put in the work if it's something that you really care about and that you're passionate about, um, and something that you want to do, you know, be vegan. Um, you just, you need to be willing to, to learn and, you know, try new foods, um, go to different sections of the supermarket. Um, there are like vegan designated, like vegan or vegetarian foods, like all in one section, a lot of the time. Um, mm -hmm. I think in order to make it more accessible, you need to look for the resources, right? Like not just like, assume that someone's going to hold your hand through it. It's great if you have someone that does, but a lot of the time you won't. Um, I think that social media is huge. Um, I think that following, you know, vegan accounts on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, TikTok, you know, it's, you have like cooking type channels. You have like people that are really um, speak about like the ethics of it, um, their environmental impact. Um, just, I think that learning about it is like the best thing you can do and also finding your why and that can look different for anyone but i think that that is probably the most important part of making it easier for you because when you find your why and you realize how important something is to you if it is important to you it it really overcomes like any obstacles right like you don't even care how difficult mm -hmm. it is to an extent um so i think just finding out like how much it matters to you and why that will motivate you to find the resources, learn about it, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's such a powerful thing what you just said there. Because I feel like that's like with anything, you know, when you mm -hmm. really are connected to why you're doing something, you can you can do you can find ways to actually make it happen regardless but if you're not connected to why you're doing something you're trying to do something you can like try a hundred different things and you still won't be able to do it so right right yeah yeah so like when it comes to health and fitness how do you get enough protein uh, being a vegan um like how do you do that? yeah yeah so that's a question that vegans get asked a lot possibly more than any other question. Um, and there's a couple different ways to answer that. I think that when I, when I get asked that question, first off, I ask people like, usually it's non-vegans that are asking it. It's like, well, um, the first thing I ask is, um, well, how much protein do you get in a day right now? How many grams of protein do you get a day? And what's your goal? And I have yet to get an answer to that from anyone. <laughs> um, but um, typically, typically, um, men should have an average of about 55 grams of protein a day and women should have an average of 45 grams of protein a day. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, plants do have protein. Um, the whole thing that like only, you know, animal products, meat has protein. That's a whole like marketing thing. Um, but yeah, plants definitely have protein. I think, you know, it's really important. Um, legumes, whole grains, things like that, even vegetables have protein. You know, if you're eating a balanced diet of a lot of whole foods, um, you know, vegan junk food is fine and all, but you know, if you really, if you really want to get into like the health parts of it as well, and not just for the animals, yeah, it's important to eat minimally processed foods, um, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, things like that. Um, like a lot of like nuts and seeds, you know, and you don't even need that much. Um, you know, just like, um, if you're eating enough food as well, mm -hmm. that's 
healthy, good for you, that kind of thing. I think a lot of the time, especially when people first go vegan, they don't eat enough because mm-hmm. they don't know what to eat or they're just, maybe it's like a health kick and they're just like, yeah, I'm just going to eat. Like I'm going to count my calories and be hungry all the time. And I want to lose all this weight. And it's like, you can lose weight as a vegan and still eat a good amount of food. Like I eat a lot. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, just making sure that you're eating enough food and whole foods, um, you'll, you'll get the protein that you need for sure. Yeah. So on the, on the topic of losing weight, um, how can veganism support people in losing weight? Because I, I think what you said there is right. Like a lot of people just cut down their calories massively. And it has a huge impact because you end up, you can lose weight, but you can also lose a lot of muscle mass, uh, yeah. which can later make you put on a lot of weight. Um, right. So how can veganism support people in losing weight? Right. Well, I think that with vegan foods as well, like the healthy vegan foods, um, when you're eating more like whole food, plant-based, those foods are naturally a lot of, the majority of the time, you know, lower calorie anyway. So mm-hmm. eating, you can eat more food. You can eat like a huge, you know, make a huge like salad or rice bowl or whatever, stir fry. And it's going to be less calories than like the animal based version anyway. Um, so a lot of the time I see people lose weight naturally. Like if you're eating like the regular, like standard American diet, um, and someone goes like totally vegan or even just vegetarian or from vegetarian to vegan. Um, I see people go like, go from non-vegans to junk food, vegans, like junk food, vegans, like, and they're losing weight. Um, so I think that's definitely, it, I know it's possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it doesn't work for everyone, if you're eating all that, you know, the processed meats, cheeses, dessert foods, things like that, like the vegan versions. Um, but if you're wanting to take that a step further, whole food, plant-based, you know, no oil, like cooking, I make stir fries with like vinegar instead of oil. A lot of the times, um, I do use mm-hmm. oil. I'm not like a hundred percent, like whole food, plant-based low fat. Um, but that, that is important to keep your fat content down. If you're trying to lose weight as a vegan, or if you're already vegan and trying to lose weight, um, there are healthy fats and they are, they are healthy fats and they're not bad, but it depends on what your goal is. If you're wanting to lose weight, um, just keeping, you know, the nuts and seeds, avocado, things like that. Um, eating more like leafy greens, um, that I think that's important in losing weight. Yeah. So what's the most rewarding part for you, like in being a vegan? The most what? The oh, the most rewarding part? part? Um, I would say, it's more of a holistic thing. Um, there's so much to it. Uh, there's so many different benefits, obviously health benefits, um, you know, just animal welfare environment. Um, but I think like to kind of to put it in a nutshell, the um, just living every day, knowing that like, if you didn't have the most productive day or, you know, you were stressed out about something, whatever, like you at least still did some good in the world by just being vegan. Like that might sound really cliche (laughs) and I've been doing it for 13 years, but like, it doesn't get old, you know? And we live in a very non-vegan world. And I mean, to be completely honest, like I hear from people, non-vegans all the time, like, oh, you know, I wish I was vegan and I wanna be, and you know, I feel bad eating meat or it makes me feel sick or I feel guilty. And it's like, you don't have to feel that way, you know? And I think that's also why vegans talk about veganism so much. It's because like, it's just, it's it's a good thing, you know? And you feel good about it. um, And you just want to share it with other people. So I think that's, it's just definitely rewarding in in so many ways. And just aligning, you know, your beliefs with your actions. Um, Not feeling like, well, I should do this or that, but... I can't, or I don't want to, or it's too hard, you know? And like I said, over time it gets easier. So it's not, it's not that hard over time, but it feels so rewarding to do something. It makes such a big positive impact. And when you do it for so long, you just, it, it comes easily, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, totally. I think it's like the getting started part is what can be hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. But like once you have gotten started, you can actually maintain that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't even know how to cook meat. Like, I don't know how to make an egg. <laughs> I mean, I didn't learn how to how to cook until, yeah, I went vegan at 16. I didn't learn how to cook until after I went vegan. It was part of, yeah. like, I was eating potatoes and oatmeal for, like, the first six months in, like, wow. yeah, in, like, Columbus, Ohio. I didn't know any, any vegans. I just, I read the one book. I didn't know one vegan documentary. I didn't have any other vegan resources, you know. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's incredible yeah but as far as being sorry yeah go ahead oh, yeah, you're good go ahead so as far as being an entrepreneur and running life veganized how has that journey been for you um well I've always I've always wanted to be self-employed an entrepreneur um I watched my parents do it they've run multiple businesses and I just saw them kind of have their own schedule that especially having kids like they were able to just really be there for us I guess in a lot of ways and so I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and like live life on my own terms um and then I found veganism when I was a teenager and I it's definitely <laughs> it's kind of like contradictory in a way because there's like this paradox because I I'm naturally and definitely when I was younger like I've been like a very like shy reserved person um mm -hmm. so especially like this field not like the vegan field but like the social media content creation talking to like the public it freaks me out a lot <laughs> I, I mean I, I don't know I'm doing things these days that a year ago I would have just been like I could never like I want to but I could never you know yeah I feel like every year it's like growing. I've been doing Life Veganized since 2016. And when I first started it, it was really being in Ohio. I had like friends and family members, coworkers at like my office job that were like, would like ask me about veganism and they'd really want to know about it. And I did not want to talk about veganism to people that I wasn't super close to or comfortable with, like whether they were friends, family members, like if they were going to be rude about it. I just, mm -hmm. I didn't feel, you know, like it doesn't, like I, I wasn't, and I'm still not the type that like, you don't have to be a super, um, you know, outward like activist if you're a vegan, like you can, it can just be your own journey, your own thing, your own path and peace of mind or whatever. You don't have to be super vocal about it all the time, you know, or if you're mm -hmm. not comfortable with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that as far as like this path, it's, I'm doing things that I, it's really exciting. I feel very like alive a lot of the time and it's very, it's very fulfilling, but it's, it's scary and it's a lot, um, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't change it for anything, you know, it just makes sense. Like wrapping up veganism, which has become like my biggest passion with being able to you know, just kind of do it the way that I want. Um, it's great. And I, but it, it's hard. And I, I, I'm learning as I go with that as well. Google helps a lot. I think anyone that wants to be an entrepreneur or anything work for themselves, it's, it can be difficult at like the business mm -hmm. side of things, but you Google things, look for mentors, like look for them. Cause again, like people aren't going to hold your hand all the time, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And if you really want to do it, find your why with that too, you know, um, and just stay motivated and you can overcome like anything, be vegan, be an entrepreneur, do whatever you want to do. If you, you know, if you have, if you have a good enough reason and, and you have the motivation. That's a really good advice for people that want to get started for sure. Especially like, you know, getting to like, you know, getting started in any kind of health and fitness thing or being a vegan or anything. It right. takes time, it takes commitment. And you're right, it is scary. Like when I looked at your profile, seriously, I couldn't think that you would be scared at all. Like, <laughs> like so, and, you know, colorful. And like I was just sharing with Stephanie so much that I her her profile inspired me so much I went and made myself a peanut butter fudge. I was like I have to do something, 
but <laughs> you're right like it takes but man it takes time and it it does can be scary yeah so, so any other tips you have for people that are thinking to specifically go vegan um definitely not just like use your resources but sometimes you don't have resources so get resources i'm so serious about that like I mean, there are documentaries on like Netflix, there are free documentaries. I mean, one specifically, Forks Over Knives, it's free on their website. Like you don't even have to stream anything. I have, I watch it about once a year. Um, I've rewatched it again like this week. Um, but yeah, like um, YouTube is great. Um, I'm, I'm like specifically mentioning like specific companies, organizations that I love. Plant-Based News, they do, they do um, a vegan like 45 minute ish documentary every year. Um, just like on the past year of veganism, it's more like current events and, and accomplishments in the vegan community, environmental impact the past year. But plant-based news on um, YouTube, they do like, they have like a vegan 2020, vegan 2019, vegan 2018. They're super interesting um, and kind of emotional. Um, and it's good for motivation and, and learning, right? Um, so I think that using social media is good. If you're into books, like there are so many good vegan books, not just vegan cookbooks, but books on like how to live a vegan life and why you should live a vegan life. Um, the book that I read years ago, it's called Skinny Bitch. Um, so it's advertised like a nutrition type book, um, but that's about like the ethics and stuff and the health benefits of veganism. Um, but yeah, definitely find some resources, reach out to people. like. There are so many vegans that want to help you. If you have vegans that you know in your life, which a lot of people know at least a vegan, um, ask them about it because trust me, they're willing to talk to you about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but to me directly, I mean, I have people DMing me like, hey, I'm so sorry. Is it okay if I talk to you about this and ask you questions? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. Not a problem. Um, and then just it's like find out if, if it's something that you want to do. You know, don't go vegan for other people. Don't go vegan because you know, someone pressured you into it or you're in a relationship with someone who's vegan or you're trying to impress someone, like that's never gonna stick and it's not gonna work. Um, mm. But yeah, find out if it's something that resonates with you. And if so, um, just be willing to learn a lot. Try new foods, try a lot of new foods. Yeah, that's such a good tip, especially for someone that wants to get started. Like it's really good to actually go and look for the right resources and, you know, ask for help. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I love that. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Stephanie. It's been absolutely amazing having you here. Um, in closing, where can people find you, connect with you and learn from you? Yeah, so I'm active on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Um, I'm getting on TikTok. Um, working i do have some tiktok videos but i would say if you want to like reach out to me directly instagram dms um would be where i'm most responsive um but yeah those are the platforms you can reach me at okay great and i will put your instagram link in the description of this uh podcast as well so people can just click the link and reach out to you okay. <laughs> sounds great all right, well, thank you so much for taking the time. This has been absolutely incredible. Honestly, like I've had questions. I know that Deep's had questions about veganism, and this has been such a um, an illuminating conversation. So thank you for yeah, making the thank time. You yeah, thank, thank you so much for having me.